Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Alternative Sports Show, powered by Virgin Magazine. I'm Matthew Connell, joined, as always, with my good buddy, Andre Dixon. But enough about us, because we are joined with someone that has pretty much done it all at international cricket level, caused England a lot of, you know, upset and pain. Thank you very much. And if that wasn't enough, has also found time to score worldies in World Cups for Australia as well, dual sports, like, if that wasn't impressive enough, Elise Perry, how are you doing? Hey, Matt. Yeah, I'm good, thanks. Thank you so much for joining us. A um, lot of exciting stuff happening in the world of cricket, of course, thanks to The 100. How are you involved in The 100 coming this summer? Oh, yeah, I'm, um, I'm really pumped and, like, super, super chuffed that, um, that a team wanted me to, to play in... Um, you know in the competition and I just think like it's so exciting when something like this comes along and you know it's only the first edition once off and um you know that was kind of meant to be last year but um you know with everything that happened it's sort of been delayed that that one year and um yeah so to to sort of be able to you know come across and and play in it um is going to be absolutely great and I'm really looking forward to it. So Elise honestly a pleasure to meet you with the 100 um having men's and women's cricket share the same platform was this drive for gender equality in the sport a key factor of you taking part in it? Um, oh, yeah. I mean, like, <laughs> yes or no, I just I just love playing cricket. And, um, you know, any chance you sort of get to, to play in something, um, you know, I, I always love jumping at that opportunity. But I do think, you know, what you're saying there in terms of um, the real drive for the two competitions, the men's and the women's, being um, pitted as, as very much equal billing and, um, you know, the, the women's, the women's game is actually, you know, kicking off the, the comp with the first game and they're being played concurrently. Um, there's some wonderful things there and it's really ex- exciting for the sport, um, you know, on both sides. I feel, especially globally, like we saw so much positivity and um, and growth off the back of the last Soccer World Cup, for example. And I think now this is a really great opportunity with the 100 um, to see that impact also come from sport. But personally, from your perspective, at least, just how important do you feel sport has um, you know, in driving kind of equality within wider society? Um, yeah, it definitely plays an important role. I think, um, you know, through my experiences, I suppose, um, which is what I'm probably best to speak for, but, um, yeah, like in a lot of ways, sport reflects society. And I think, um, you know, as we've seen some real progress within, um, you know, broader society, with particularly with equality, um, I think that's been very much mirrored in sport and, and has given, um, you know, I guess the strive for equality a great avenue to achieve that um, and um, demonstrate that for other walks of life. And, um, you know, a lot of sports being really proactive, um, particularly in Australia um, and I'm sure in the UK as well. But I've sort of recognised that like 50% of the population is female and you'd be crazy not to try and capture their attention um, through, you know, participation in, in playing the sport um, and having female teams represent um, the sport or whether it's through, you know, be, being a fan, being engaged in the community, um, you know, as an official, all those kinds of things. I think, um, you know, it's such a valuable, value, valuable prospect for, for sport. So, um, yeah, it's been been great. I've, you know, I've probably been involved in cricket for the last 15 years or so and to have seen that change over that, that period of time has just been wonderful. So let's um, let's rewind it back a bit because maybe for our audience who are maybe are tuning in because of different sports and whatnot, and of course you are in Australia, we're here in in sort of sunnyish London at the moment. Um, so for people that don't know, of course, as we mentioned in the intro, you have basically done both sports at a very very high level. Competing in World Cups of football was like enough for one person to be like, "That's cool," but you pretty much won quite. Well, you've won a lot of stuff at international level as well. Um, you know, it's it's unavoidable the performances you have done within that sport. But how, from a young age, did you balance that the demands of both sports? And maybe what would you give yourself as advice now, having been through that process? Yeah, I was super lucky. I think um, growing up in Australia, like playing sport, um, hanging out in the backyard with your family, just 
kicking balls and hitting balls and throwing and catching all those things was very much like just a part of your childhood and was certainly a part of mine and um like my dad's really sporty he was into cricket um so is my mom and I've got an older brother and um you know so from my earliest recollections we were always doing stuff that was a bit active and revolved around sport um and that kind of just like transitioned into me playing cricket and, and and football and um you know trying out for different teams and you know really enjoying it and getting getting a bit better and then um I think yeah um around that period of time probably both sports weren't as professional for females so um it was quite possible to play both like that wasn't a full-time commitment and um I just went with it and I was yeah really lucky like I had the easiest job I just got to go to training and, and play matches and this was probably left for everyone else to sort out the logistics of it all um but yeah I mean from that point of view to answer your question there's probably not too much I would have told myself back then um you know from this position now I, I think I just made the absolute most of it and I had some wonderful experiences as a result and I feel very fortunate and you know, I, I think the only thing I'd say is I just need to continually always thank the people that kind of made that possible and, and never forget that. Uh, Lee, so, you know, so, salute to you being, um, you know, representing your country in two different sports professionally. I'm I'm still waiting for my call up. Uh, it hasn't happened <laughs> as yet, but uh, hopefully I can catch you up at some point. But away from competitive sport, what do you like to do outside of sport? You know, you know what are your interests and hobbies? I'm, I'm quite nosy. <laughs> um. Yeah, I um, actually am pretty into, I think this is a bit of a thing in the UK, but I really like going camping, um, spending a bit of time like out in the countryside um, in Australia. I also have a bit of a passion for wine. So um, I have like a little bit of a project to, to make some wine and, and just learn as much as I can about, about that industry. Um, and I also just love being active, to be fair. Um, anything that involves the outdoors and and doing stuff um with fr- friends and family is kind of kind of my jam um besides that like i think i'm pretty boring to be honest I like a bit of music and going <laughs> no to way you. not not with representing <laughs> two two uh national teams uh, no sorry i can't have that one <laughs> <laughs> well, well we'll put that to the test you can't look i very much doubt that you are a boring person and this is we have a little segment we would like to do towards the end of our interviews where we like to ask our guests a few recommendations to help our wider audience. So we've, we've done this with all kinds of athletes, the likes of Anthony Joshua, and we've had some very interesting um, answers. So Elise Perry, I put this to you first. What is a Netflix series, Amazon, Apple, that you're watching at the moment that you are <laughs> loving and recommend that we should also get stuck into too, if we haven't yet already? Well, like this is actually going to like prove my point. I don't really watch a lot of stuff. No! Um, but in saying that, I'm actually stuck in hotel quarantine at the moment um, over in New Zealand. So I did start, I like documentary series. So I yes. did start uh, watching the history of swearing the other day. And, uh, <laughs> it's important. It's important. Uh, We've got to know the roots. Yeah, buddy loved it. So <laughs> um, yeah, that's probably my rec- recommendation. Right, um, what what artists, musicians, songs are you listening to at the moment that, that we may not know that you, you, you know, I can add to my playlist that you're going to sure. recommend? Yeah, I don't, I don't know if you've been to alternative music, but a um, couple of Aussie artists that I'd throw at you. Um, an oldie but a goodie is Missy Higgins. And then um, a guy called Geordie Maxwell who is from Perth and he sings really chilled, like, surfy vibe songs. Um, and then I'm a really old school John Mayer fan. Um, yes, but, oh, legend, yeah. the legend John Mayer. A cool collaboration, I think, at the Grammys with um, country artist called Marin Morris, and um, I really love that. Anyway, I'm waffling, but yeah, they're my. <laughs> <laughs> this is important. This is a part of recommendations. This is where there is no limit to your answer. And finally, Elise, from us. Is there a social account or profile that you follow on, you know, maybe the Insta or the Twitter that you say is, all right, I get a lot of entertainment value out of this. Everyone should go check it out. Is there something out there? Uh, there is, but it's a little bit um, specific to Australia. It's a post, um, oh, sorry, an account called Batuta Advocate, and it pretty much just takes the piss out of current news stories in Australia. And um, <laughs> you probably have to be Aussie to find it really funny, but there's a few on there that you'd probably get no matter where you're from. 
a bit of fun spin on the news. Well, this is what we need in the world. We always need good news to make this place um, a little brighter. But Elise, thank you so much for um, joining myself and Dre. Um, talking about all good things, 100, cricket, a lot of exciting things coming up um, in the summer. As we roll off into the sunset, where can we find you? What are the social handles? And where can we keep track of your exciting journey coming this summer? Well, um, probably Instagram's the easiest one. I, it's just at Elise Perry. Um, Elise is with two L's and a Y. Well, we appreciate it very much. Thank you so much for spending your time here on the Alternative Support Show chatting to us, um, Elise. Pleasure to meet you and thank you so much. Thanks for having me, guys.